Hi Emma, I'm going to do this video for you to show you how to tune unisons clean and confirm that they're clean and I want to do three things for you. One, show you how you can do this yourself. Tune and measure and know if your unisons are clean or not. Two, impress upon you the importance of clean unisons by also hopefully demonstrating that Without this method, without knowing how to know for sure that your unisons are clean, you probably don't know. So if you don't know your unisons are clean, you go to somebody's home, uh, you tune a piano, you leave, they don't call you back. And you're like, why didn't they call me back? And if you're lucky, they'll tell you your unisons weren't clean. And then you're like, well, how am I supposed to know? I thought they were clean. And the reason is because a unison is clean if you can't hear anything that would tell you that it's not clean. But if your ear isn't trained, then you won't hear those things that would tell you that the unison is not clean, and you would think it's clean. And then the third thing I want to impress upon you is this. Because it's so important to have clean unisons, you need to get proper training and the only way to get proper training and training in how to tune clean unisons is from another piano technician you need to get training and not only that um the standard way that everybody's tuning a piano is putting in the mute strip and tuning a single string and then when you're done pull out the mute strip to the unisons this is not a good way to get practice at tuning unisons because you're not doing it. You're just doing it at the end. And there's no uh, criteria, there's no need, there's no reason for it to be clean. But the way I teach is we use what's called double string unison. So you put one mute in one string and you tune the other two strings clean all the time. And if they're not clean, you just can't tune the piano. You try to tune an interval and you can't because you can't hear the beating. So this, it does two things. One, forces you to be tuning unisons all the time. And what better way to get better at tuning clean unisons than having to do it all the time. And number two, it forces you to know what a good unison sounds like because if your unison isn't good, you can't use it to tune the rest of the piano. So it's very, like I call it front loaded with pain. So at the beginning of our courses, of our classes, the students are frustrated, but frustrated for the right reasons. Other programs, you get frustrated because you don't understand what they're saying or why am I doing this? My system, the GoApe system explains exactly why. But you have to be you have to be logical. You have to be a logical person to follow the, the reasoning. With the other systems, you just, you just accept what they say and you don't need to know why, but it doesn't give you these results, which I've been getting concert level tuners in one year. And part of the reason for that is that their unisons are so clean. That's why. I'm just gonna turn that off. So that's part of the reason why these people are getting concert level tunings because the unisons are so clean and that's what people hear. When your unisons aren't clean, they write you off. If your unisons are clean, but your intervals are so-so, they might not notice. But if your unisons are clean and your intervals are right on, that's when people say, that's the person I want to tune my piano. So you definitely want one of those two situations, not the first where you, people write you off. So let's get some clean unisons. All right, what I'm gonna try and do is tune two kinds of unisons. One that is perfect or close to perfect, and the other that sounds good but is not, okay? That's the ones we want you to stop tuning. The ones that you think are good but aren't. So we'll, I'll try and do that. So let's start with the A. make it out of tune.
second, the third note. Not only do these unisons have to be clean, they have to be stable. So this note was not stable. Let me fix it using the Go Ape system. Still the same string. So that's going to be good. I'm going to measure that and I'm going to show you how I measure it, how I mark it, and how you can do the same thing. Now let's try and do this note here. So that unison, many people think that sounds fine. And I want to show you uh, why it's not and how you can tell what you can do to determine that it's not. And now I'm recording my screen and I'm opening Ocean Audio or Ocean Audio, a free program. And what you would do is you would just file new 440, 100, mono, OK record and play those notes. And then stop the recording. There's our two notes right there. And now what we want to do is listen to each partials to find out if they are beating or not. So we'll take that A and we'll copy it four times. And then we will um, filter. So you do that by going effects, filter, bandpass filter. And we're going to filter the first partial. So A4, first partial is A4, 440 hertz. And you slide these around so you get around 440 hertz. You apply that, and there you go. Now we're going to go to the second partial, which is uh, 880. You don't have to be right on, just close. So like 926 is fine, and 706 should be fine. And you see that they're not beating at all. And the third partial would be E6, which is, so the first partial, second partial, third partial is the fifth. I hope you know a little bit about music theory. If not, you gotta, you gotta learn if you're gonna be a piano tuner. So use your ear. Drag and listen. And there's the third partial. Completely clean. Fourth partial Back to A. Not the C sharp. The A. So there's your beats, okay? There might be a little bit of a beat there. You see how the volume is coming back on that? I'll show you how we mark that. 
There's a tiny little beat coming back. So now what about this other one that we thought sounded good? Let's see what's going on with that one. So uh, there's the first partial. Looks good, no beating. Second partial. Octave above. Oh, well, there's something starting to come out. Third partial, going up a fifth. Oh, you put the loop on here too, eh? The loop button allows you to loop. And this button here allows you to hear it unfiltered. Unfiltered. Up the fifth. Ah, see, now we're starting to hear some beating going on there. And then for the top one, Yeah, definitely some beating there. Okay, so now what I want to show you is how we do this. This is how I mark four partials. One, two, three, four. This is how we mark the unisons. And you get four out of four. So if you look, you start with four out of four. So here's the first partial. If the volume gets quiet and then gets loud, you lose marks. The volume is supposed to just keep getting quieter and quieter and quieter. So that's a 4 out of 4 for the first partial, 4 out of 4 for the second partial, 4 out of 4 for the third partial. Now here, if the volume gets quiet and then more than doubles, you lose a mark. So I think that's probably more than double, so I'll lose a mark on that. So that's 4, 4, 4, and 4. Three, four, 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 and three. The mark 93.8. An 80% is a pass, so this would pass. Now, what about the next one? The G sharp that we thought was fine. We thought that was fine. Well, the first partial gets a four out of four. The second partial, oh, look at that. The volume is quiet and then getting louder more than double and then it does it again so if it more than if it goes less than double you get half a mark off if it goes more than double you get two marks off so this is going to be a 2 out of 4 and then the next one this is less than double so a half a mark off this is more than double so a full mark off so uh, that would be uh, 2.5 and then the final one here there's one mark off and we'll just leave it like that one mark off so that's a three so the mark is 71.9 so this is a pass at like 93 percent and this one is a fail at 72 72 percent and I don't know what you think. I don't know if you think, well, they both sound the same to me, so it doesn't matter. It depends on what you care about. If you care about doing a good job, then you will realize that this does matter. These intervals do matter. This unison is not good enough. Even though you think it is, it's not. If you continue to tune unisons like this, you will never reach uh, a point where you know you're good and you're proud of your work. You might think you're good, but your pride is going to be pretty weak. So the point of this, the point of this video for you, again, threefold. One, just to introduce you to the idea of unisons and how so many, and that's another thing, so many piano technicians are tuning unisons and they're walking around with their head held high and they have no idea how bad they are because they sound good to me but they're not good and your customers 
if they notice, and there will be customers, if you're lucky, that will notice, they, if they notice, they're, you're, they won't be your customers anymore. They will go to somebody else. That's a lot of money they're paying, okay? And they don't want to throw their money away. That's throwing their money away when their unisons are like that. Certainly not a concert hall. You won't be tuning at a concert hall. So introduce you to unisons. Show you a way that you can test your own unisons. And, uh, you know, I hope that your unisons are like this and they're getting 70%. Because most people are getting like a minus, they're getting zero percent on this. They're losing marks massively because their unisons are like, like that. They think that's a clean unison. Even that, that's like a 20 percent. And then the third thing is to impress upon you that if you care, really do care about this, you need to get training, but not just any training. The training that I provide has been proven to get people concert level results in months, like around a year, give or take, not years. Like, like this, this unison, it takes the average tuner like 10 years to get this because they're tuning with single strings. But my system with the double strings kicks you. It kicks you in the behind. You like constantly being flogged because you it won't let you go all kinds of systems allow that to go but not this not my system it won't allow that to pass you just won't be able to 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 hear well enough and that's a good thing because when you play the intervals you know like this would be maybe uh you know there's supposed to be beats there. You can't hear them at all because this note is horrible. And so that gives you feedback. You know, it's like, I can't hear the beats. And then you say to yourself, because I teach you this, I can't hear the beats, not because of my ear, because my ear is fine. Your ear is fine. You can't hear the beats because your unisons aren't clean. So back to the drawing board, clean up that unison, and then by the time you're done the course, you're, clean, you're tuning unisons that are clean like that, like very, very fast. So I hope that was interesting. Let me know if you have any questions. And I hope that um, I can, you know, if you, I hope that you're the kind of technician who wants to be the best and that you feel that what I have to offer is something that you would like to have. All right. Thanks a lot for watching.